Okay, now let's look at governance and compliance. In this case, first we are going to describe the purpose of Azure policy. We have a service called Azure policy, which makes sure that your resources which you are deploying on Azure should follow the compliance. Then we are going to focus on the purpose of resource locks so that accidentally you should not delete the resources by, or maybe some of your team members should not change it. So we have a resource locks for that. Then we are going to describe the purpose of service trust portal, which is helping you to make sure that your services which you're running is following the compliance standard. And then finally, the one of the most important tool from Microsoft for governance is Microsoft Purview. We'll talk about that also in this module. Now let's start with Azure policy. Azure policy helps to enforce organizational standards and to access compliance at scale. It provides governance and resource consistency with regulatory compliance, security, and cost management. Let's take a scenario that you know that you have a multiple team members who are going to create resources in Azure subscriptions. You also have multiple subscriptions to manage in your organization. Now, how can you make sure that whatever compliance standards you are applying, they should not break it? Or sometimes it's not like you are not allowed to use this resource. Sometimes you have to specify a proper configuration. Like for example, let's say you have a team of developers who are going to work on some virtual machine based deployments. When they are going to do this, you want to make sure that staging environments and their prod environments should use a specific size of virtual machine deployments only. How can you restrict them? How can you restrict that they are only allowed to deploy virtual machines in the specific regions? Well, for all of this, we have a list of Azure policies, which you can assign, customize, and you can also create a group of policies, and then you can apply onto a certain subscription or resource groups. This provides built-in policies and initiative definitions. This initiative is nothing but group of multiple policies. There are also a couple of initiatives which are followed by different governments and countries, which are also available in Azure policy list you can directly apply them if your client or your organization is following that. Under these categories of all the Azure resources such as storage, networking, compute, security center and monitoring, you will find the categorizations of policies also with that. After Azure policies, we have resource locks. Resource locks are going to protect your Azure resources from accidental deletion or modification. Think like this, that you have created a perfect virtual machine for your dev environment or for your prod environment. Now you want to make sure that the disk associated with that or the resources like public IP address or a bastion which are connected with that should not get deleted accidentally by someone. For that resource, you can manage the locks at subscription level, resource group level, or maybe at the individual resource level like disk and drive. When you apply this kind of a log, you have log types like read, update, and delete. Whichever lock you apply, based on that, users can be restricted to do those actions. Even if you have applied the lock and then you try to delete that, then you can also not delete this thing until unless you delete the resource lock. In technically, you unlock that resource. We have a walkthrough available on learn.microsoft.com for the resource lock. I strongly recommend you to go through that especially when you're planning for a certification exam of AZ-900. Resource locks are important topic for that. Then we have Service Trust Portal. The Service Trust Portal URL is available and is visible in that learn.microsoft.com. When you go through that, Service Trust Portal is going to give you all the tools for your governance and compliance. Whatever documents, whatever rules which Azure is following, you can directly go to Service Trust Portal and you can check that. Most of the time, these documents are super lengthy. I have tried to check some of the documents from Service Trust Portal, which were required for some of my clients, but honestly, some of the documents are lengthy like 300, 400 pages in that. So those white papers, those reports, and those, those documents which they are providing inside Service Trust Portal, maybe it's not something which you want to go through for the certification exam. But yes, if you're really from the security background or if you're really focusing on the compliance of your organization, 
then maybe you should go and check and then Microsoft is promoting and highlighting everything there in the service trust portal. Otherwise, this is not a very important topic for AZ900. Last but not the least, we have Microsoft Purview, which is a family of data governance, risk and compliance solutions that helps you to get a single unified view in your data. Microsoft Purview brings insights about your on-premise, multi-cloud and software as a services data together. It is all about your data. And the good thing is, everything inside Purview is automated. This makes sure that you can find your data. You can also do the sensitive data classification so that you can understand which part of data you want to look for. And then you can configure end-to-end -end data lineage. Microsoft Purview is one of the most popular Azure service of recent time. 